Okay, so the last thing we did was force the stop into the rear shock body uh, by lightly tapping around the edge of the stop with the mallet. Okay, now hold the lower end of the push rod assembly with the vise. Mm, okay. Okay, so now we're going to go reinstall. Um, we're going to install the bump stop, okay? The bump stop, this little cup here for the bump stop, and then the uh, the locking nut for the clevis, okay? And then the clevis itself, all right? So first, you're going to want to put this guy on here. Okay, then you're going to want to put this. I think the, the KX one, the KX and the KLX are exactly the same. So I think you can interchange it any way you want. So, all right. And then, and then this will come in later. Okay. When we put the spring in, you know, you don't have to put this in now. Uh, so now we're going to put the nut in. This is v this is very hard to get through here, man. It is. Wow. What the hell? The threads are messed up on this, I think. That's why I couldn't get this out. Okay, guys. So, I'm having a trouble getting this nut back in, so I'm retapping it, okay? I, I, I could not get the tap in before, so I don't have the die for this, so I can't make this smaller, but I can make this bigger, okay? And it looks like it's it's good right now. That's weird. It just suddenly stopped. I think that'll do the trick. Um, I think they used some kind of red Loctite on this, and it, it messed up the threads when I took it out, so... It's like it's so tight it, it will not just screw in like it's supposed to um, what what we probably should have done is I should have put it all together when before we put the shock back in there <laughs> before we put the thing in there so we could use the top nut you know but this isn't proper it's not supposed to be like this I think it's supposed to screw on okay okay so hopefully it'll go in a little better now oh yeah much better Much better. Okay. Much better. I think I'm going to run the tap through it one more time and then we'll get it in there. So yeah. Yeah, this was messed up. When I took it out, it got messed up because the they use freaking red Loctite on it. Okay. Uh, but normally you're not supposed to, you don't, you don't normally have to take the clevis out, but I'm, I put the, I'm putting the KLX 140 clevis on this so I could put it on my KLX 140. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Moment of truth. Spin this nut all the way in here. It goes go on a lot more smoother than it did before. That's for sure. Okay, I think I think they'll do the trick. Okay, I won't get stuck in there anymore. Uh, what I will do is I will put some Loctite on the clevis. Okay, but not red Loctite. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put some some purple Loctite or blue Loctite. Um, okay, I'm just gonna put it directly on the threads. Okay, that should be good. Just gonna get this excess. Okay. Put the clevis on. Till it kind of stops. Okay. It goes all the way. Make sure this is all the way down. Okay. Okay, I think that's as far as far as far as it wants to go. Okay, that should be good. All right, there we go. It's pretty much fully assembled already. So this is actually supposed to be all the way down here, okay. 
And uh, okay, so let's uh, finish. Uh, so if you can't get this all the way in, make sure you retap that nut because that that nut had like was like messed up or something. Okay, right. next step: <laughs> pump. Uh, hold the lower end of the push rod assembly with the vise. Okay, so we're gonna flip this on over. That's why we needed to put this back on this away. Okay, it says hold the lower end of the push rod assembly with a vise. Okay, done. Pump the rear shock up and down several times, then leave it in the fully extended position for about three minutes. Fully extended, but it's already wanting to go down by itself, so what the hell. <laughs> okay, so it says pump it several times, okay? So how about five? It sure feels a lot better than it did before. Okay, one. Nine. Shaft a little bit here. Let's go all the way down to the bump stop. Ten. Okay, so I, I did it ten times. It says to leave it. I leave it fully extended. I can't really do that unless I have the shock in there. So I'm gonna go put I, I'm put the spring back in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the spring back in so it doesn't get see see it's it's starting to go down again. Okay, I got the uh, I got the new spring in. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm uh, I'm extending the I'm tightening up the shock on it so this thing will stay up. Okay, see there's that much still that much more movement. Okay, so I've uh, so what I've done is I've put the spring in there so it would stay fully extended. All right, or come back. It says now it says to come back in three minutes. Okay, so um, pump the rear shock up and down several times, and then leave it in the full extended position for about three minutes. Okay, so we're gonna leave it like this for three minutes, and I I think that's all pretty much all we have to do. Okay, guys, home stretch here. Here we go. So we're on the final steps of uh, oil filling. Okay, so. Um, Okay, so the last thing we did was pump the rear shock up sep up and down several times and then leave it in the fully extended position for about three minutes, okay? So to keep, to keep it in the fully extended position, I put the spring back in, okay? <laughs> because it, it, it just wanted to go down by itself. Okay, the next step is remove the air bleeder bolt E from the upper part of the rear shock body, okay? The air bleeder bolt. Let me go flip the shock around. Okay, so yeah, so up here is your air bleeder bolt. Okay, let me go zoom in on it. Okay, that's the air bleeder bolt. We're gonna go crack that sucker open. And so, um, all right, so I'm gonna go over the next couple steps. Um, it says here, okay, so it says, if oil comes out of the air bleeder hole, let it overflow until it stops. I don't, I wonder if it's supposed to be up like, oh, that's a good question. Yeah, it doesn't say what position it's got to be in. I think it's got to be, according, according to this picture, it doesn't say, it doesn't say, but according to this picture, the, the, the shock is in a horizontal position, okay? So I think that's how we got to, uh, you know what, I don't know. We'll just do it like this. Okay, so it says, if oil comes out of the air bleeder bolt hole, when we, when we take the bolt out, let it overflow until it stops. If the oil does not come out of the air bleeder bolt hole, adds the specified oil into the air bleeder bolt hole until it overflows. That is until all the remaining air is forced out. Okay, so so basically, uh, if there's if we take this out and it overflows, then then we just let it dribble down until it's so get like a, a rag or something. All right, and if it doesn't come out, then that means we're going to have to. Uh, gonna have to add more oil. 
Okay, oh, 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 the bolt came out. Okay, it came out and it's overflowing. <laughs> so I think it's fine. It just squirted a whole bunch of fluid out all over the place. Okay, so it is not overflowing anymore. So we're gonna go put the bolt back in. Okay, so uh, so we opened the bolt and and fluid shot out of it. And then, uh, and then we closed it, okay? So it's closed now. So that means there's no air in there. I sh probably shouldn't have even uh, freaking opened it. <laughs> okay, um, so so like uh, if it if it seems like it's kind of soft, it's probably because the bladder doesn't have any nitrogen in it. Okay, so um, so that's that is the last step uh, to uh, servicing your shock is to fill this up with nitrogen. Okay, and I, I will go. I will read the steps, but I don't have I don't have any means to. Well, I, you know what I do? I do. I can actually. I could. I think I can go to Costco and fill it up with nitrogen. You know, um, I probably could. I could probably do that tomorrow. Hmm, okay. So anyway, it says uh, install the bleeder bolt securely. Okay, I did. There's no torque spec for it, by the way. So just make sure it's tight. Okay, and then we're gonna. I'm gonna make sure I clean up the shock pretty good. Okay, it says fully extend the push rod assembly. Okay, so it's it's already fully extended because I got the spring in there. Okay, and then uh, inject nitrogen gas to a pressure of seven psi through the valve on the gas reservoir. And then it says check the rear shock body and gas reservoir for oil and and gas leaks. Okay, so um, what I could probably do is go down to Costco because I know they have they, they put nitrogen in tires there and fill this up with seven psi. Okay, and then check to see if there's any leaks. Um, or I can just go to my local shop and just get it done. Okay, so that's probably what I'm gonna do. The problem is it's it's Saturday. It, no, it's Sunday now. It's actually Sunday right now, and the motorcycle shops are closed on Monday. So I had to wait freaking two days to finish this shock. Um, okay, so we're not totally done. The last thing to do is to fill it up with 142 PSI. Okay. And this is check and adjust gas pressure when the gas reservoir is cold. Okay, room temperature. Oh, that's fine, whatever. Um, it's not, it's winter right now. So uh, install the spring retainer clip, both dampening adjuster. Okay, so and then just put everything back the way you found it. Okay. Um, in this case, uh, I'm I've installed my BBR spring here, okay, and um, and then we'll adjust the clickers when we get when when everything gets together, okay, and and we'll adjust the preload also. So, okay, but for now, let's just make sure this is all the way down or down as much as we can make it. Okay. Anyway, so there it is. Um, all right, guys. Yeah. Oh, I'm 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 done with everything I can do with the shock tonight. Okay, so uh, so I, I hope you. Um, so in this vlog, um, it's kind of not a how-to. It's not a, it's not a how-to video. It's kind of a how-to vlog. It's just me working on it, and you can see what's involved with servicing the shock. Okay, um, so we'll continue to do the KX100 shock install. Okay, where I would say since I, we just got finished servicing it, um, we're about 75% done. The rest is just we got to put it on the bike, okay? And we're, there's still a couple more modifications we got to do. Um, but but there you go. That's how you service a KX100 shock. I did it by, by the manual, okay? It's very nice that Kawasaki has this stuff in the service manual, and you can actually, you know, go step by step with it, okay? Um, when I did my DR650 shock, I had I didn't have anything like that. Oh, well, you know what? There kind of was something like that. There was a little paper from Showa or something that kind of told you what to do. And I kind of... Um, this kind of stuff is like... Not a lot of people do it. I'm not going to lie. Like, I I heard of people rebuilding their own shocks, but not... It's, it's like, apparently it's not very common because this was very hard to find okay so this is what you're going to need you're going to need this kawasaki k2c oil okay or kyb oil um i don't think Kaos i'm not sure this was really hard to find this is a new old stock i don't think kawasaki sells these anymore you just have to buy it from kyb okay and i i do know rocky mountain atv mc sells the kyb oil okay it's kyb k2c um shock oil okay that's what you want don't use fork oil. You're not supposed to use fork. I, 
You could use fork oil but if you want to, but but it's recommended you use shock oil because shocks are put subjected to more um, more abuse than forks, okay? They get much hotter. Um, and you can see the the fluid that came out of this shock was was like milky, like it was just full of aluminum shavings in it, like full of aluminum because the body is is aluminum. So you can see that you know the the metal parts are wearing in there. Um, so that's why it's important to service your shock uh, uh, regularly. <laughs> okay, every every couple of years, man, at least every like five years or something, man. Uh, I have to say, okay. Um, also, uh, I used an air hammer, okay, um, to get this the bottom cover off. All right, or the stop is what they call it. Um, I guess that's the one that keeps the seal from from going up and down. Um, okay, um, getting the circlip out was difficult for me too. I if uh, if I had to do it again, I would know what to do. Okay, but uh, a, a small screwdriver well, did the trick. Okay, a small screwdriver and a little hammer, and you kind of drive it in there and you kind of walk it off. Um, the reservoir was a lot easier to take out. <laughs> so not gonna lie. Okay, other than that, it was pretty easy. And then and then cleaning it up. Okay. Cleaning it up took a long time because apparently this shock was in badly need of a service, okay? Um, you could definitely feel like when you were moving it through the stroke, there was like air in there, you know? But I think, uh, and I think there's still, there still might be some air in there, but when we fill up the bladder with air, there's not going to be any more air in there, okay? <coughs> I did everything exactly like the manual told me to, okay? So I hopefully we won't have any problems with it. Now I'm not I'm not gonna lie, I I probably should have changed the seal. Okay, I should have changed the uh, the shock seal. Um, I'm I don't know how good that seal is left, but I do know the outer O-ring was still in good shape, and I think the inner one was okay still. So um, I'm not gonna I think it's okay. It wasn't leaking before, and I don't think it's leaking now. I probably check it tomorrow to see if it's leaking. But what I'm going to do now is just wipe off all the excess oil. It is so messy doing this, okay? I did not want to do this, but I kind of was forced to, okay? Um, that's what happens when you buy used parts off of eBay, especially from like 2004 bikes, <laughs> is what I'm say. Um, that's what happens, you know? You, you don't know what you're going to get. Um, if you knew, if you bought something that was, that you knew was like recently serviced, then, then yeah, good for you, you know, you know, but this is all I could find at the moment. All right. So, but at least I know that I serviced it myself and I know it, it should be good. Except when I, um, I cleaned everything, except I didn't clean the, the piston head very well. There was still a lot of that metal shavings in there and it contaminated the oil when I put it in there. So. Uh, but Hades and Megan can sleep well at night knowing that, hey, I changed the majority of the oil and I clean out all those metal shavings in there as much as possible. So, you know, the oil is much better than it was before, okay? <laughs> That's what I want to say. So, yeah, definitely, definitely the oil that came out of that was not good, okay? Um, it looks like that sh this shock has never been serviced. That's what, my, that's what my guess is, okay? Also, there was hardly any nitrogen in there. I think I checked and there was only like 15 PSI. So it definitely needed a nitrogen recharge too. So um, I bought this shock for $135. I feel I should have paid less for that. Le I should have paid less. Okay. Um, I I was looking at some prices to have some the shock rebuilt and uh, or like a service, kind of like what I just did right now. And it's gonna cost you anywhere from maybe like 150 bucks to like over $200. Okay. It's so expensive to get stuff worked on at shops nowadays and the, the good thing about this shock is it's serviceable you know um, they give you all the instructions and it's it's not re it's really not that hard it's just really messy okay <laughs> I know I, re I remember the last time I did this and it was it was a big mess just like it is now okay what a headache and it literally it took me the whole day to do it okay the the clevis the clevis uh, lock nut okay was stuck in there okay they i i think from the factory they use a red loctite and that messes up the threads on it i had to retap the threads on it because it would not go in all the way that's why i could not get that nut off okay i had to take this off and use a top nut to to take it out all right um, and then i tapped it to make sure it was really loose and then i put some loctite on the clevis so it doesn't come off all right i don't think the clevis is going to come off man it's it's got a lock nut on it that's why <laughs> okay um 
Yeah, all right. So the shock is pretty much, I would say it's 90% there. We just have to, uh, we just have to take it to a motorcycle shop so they can fill it up with nitrogen, okay? That's the, that's the last step, and then, and then we got to install it on the bike. So tomorrow, tomorrow I will try to install it on the bike, but we can't, like, you know, I have to take it back off, and then we have to. So I will, tomorrow, the next, in the next video, we will be modifying the bike. Um, oh, we're going to flip the linkage is what we're going to do, and then we're going to modify the bike so this shock fits on it. Fine, okay. Um, all right, so yeah, it's done. I'll just have to clean up all oil off of it, and then... Uh, and then put nitrogen in it and we're done servicing the shock okay it's actually not that hard but it just yeah if 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 you've never done it before it's going to take you a long time okay um, if you watch my video it, it should help a little bit <laughs> you saw i struggled quite a bit and i doing certain stuff okay and i and it took a long time to find this oil too so um is what i'm going to say uh, but yeah you can get it from K you can get it the kyb oil Right, that's that's the oil Hades Omega recommends you put in here. The, the stuff from the factory. That's the good stuff. That's the stuff that came with it, right? Okay. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, that's how you service a KX100 shock or KX85 shock, and uh, and prep it to be installed in the KLX140. All right. Here's the go. All right, hey, it is Mick here. I got my shock with me, and uh, we're gonna go there behind us to uh, um, Evolution Motorcycles, and we're gonna go fill it up. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this the the manual with me. To tell me like you know to tell them like, hey, this is 142 psi. So. <laughs> yeah, and then that's it. You know, I'll, I'll let you guys know how much it costs or if they'll even do it. <laughs> All right, here's Mick. All right, here's Mick here, uh, back in the garage. So uh, here's the shock. Um, oh, I don't have the paper, but, but it cost me, uh, $30 to, uh, <laughs> to, to refill the, sh the nitrogen in the shock. Yeah, that sucks, dude. Well, at least I got my money's worth because there was like a, no nitrogen in there. <laughs> but yeah, it's not leaking or anything, so that's good. Um, yeah, they said like to, to check the shock, you got to take the spring off and everything. But it's like, nah, that's okay. I, I, I already reassembled it, so. Okay, so uh, now the shock is ready to be put back on the bike. There's nothing else to do. We've done everything, uh, everything we can do to 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 get it on the bike. So, um, so the next step is to to reinstall it, and it's done. Torque everything, all right, and then uh, and then set the preload. I guess um, since everything is off the bike, now would be a good time to set the preload um, while the airbox isn't in there and everything, and you got access to the the collars. So. I will be doing that, all right? So that's the next step. Put the bike back together. All right, here's me out. But yeah, also I'd like to point out that, yeah, they, they when I when I went to Evolution Motorcycle, they asked me like, hey, what, what do you know what it's supposed to be filled up to? And I told them, yes, I do. But so I brought the paper in, it says 142 PS. Actually, it says, it says uh, inflate it to seven PSI and see if there's any leaks. And then inflate it to 142. I, I'm pretty sure it was fine. The bladder looked okay, you know. Um, it's just because there's like no nitrogen in it and stuff. So, all right. So there we go. That's the completed KX100 shock, um, ready for battle. All right. So, yeah.